we joked about it and he never thought anything would happen to him. Yeah. Uh, this is frightening. A well-known Valley forensic psychiatrist who worked on big cases like John Bonet Ramsey, Columbine, the baseline killer, was found shot dead outside his office in Scottsdale. And tonight, detectives are now trying to do what he did to figure out who killed him. We have team coverage of this story tonight. Jason Barry is looking back on his career contributions. First, we start with Mike Wackus on what we're learning about the shooter. Mike. Phoenix police tell us they are exploring every avenue and every angle in this case. The murder of Dr. Stephen Pitt gunned down outside his office here in North Phoenix yesterday afternoon. Pitt, a man who had spent his life studying killers, yesterday becoming the victim of one. He did have a high profile. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think he ever thought something like this would happen, but he was very aware that he did some testifying against some really bad people. Outside Dr. Stephen Pitt's closed office today, we ran into part. brothers Jay and Scott Gooding. Lifelong friends of Pitt since their childhood days in Michigan. The brothers say they flew in yesterday to visit Pitt, only to learn this morning of his murder. I'm devastated. Uh, he was a wonderful guy. The biggest takeaway. Pitt also a nationally renowned and highly regarded forensic psychiatrist. A man who spent much of his career examining some of the most bizarre, violent, and high-profile crimes and criminals in this nation's modern history. And according to Phoenix Police, Pitt fatally shot outside his North Phoenix office building about 5.30 yesterday afternoon. It sounds like there was a verbal argument between the victim and the suspect and that during that argument, shots were fired. Today, Phoenix PD releasing a composite sketch of the man who witnesses say was arguing with Pitt and then fired the fatal rounds. The gunman fled, first responders pronouncing Stephen Pitt dead at the scene. He is well known. He, he's obviously done, done interviews and some other work for, for other uh, media outlets and for police departments. So every avenue is going to be looked at by investigators to find out how and why this happened. Again, take a good look at that composite sketch. Anyone with any information encouraged to call the Phoenix Police Department or silent witness. A thousand dollar reward now being offered in North Phoenix. I'm Mike Watkins, Arizona's family. Hey Mike, thank you. Dr. Pitt, by the way, has provided a lot of insight over the years about how the criminal mind works. And he hasn't been afraid to share that knowledge. We continue our live team coverage with Jason Barry in the newsroom. You interviewed him many times over the years. Yes, I did. And the one thing that struck me the most about Stephen Pitt was how direct he was. Always careful not to reveal too many details about a case or even speculate simply to fuel the media frenzy. Pitt was all about the facts. We have someone who's operating in the community, who's committing serial offenses. Dr. Stephen Pitt had a unique skill set. Whenever there was a bizarre murder mystery or serial killer on the loose, law enforcement agencies across the country would reach out to the forensic psychiatrist to help solve their case. Each subsequent offense becomes um, more intoxicating uh, for the offender. And ultimately, it's that intoxication that leads them to become sloppy, the sloppiness leads them to leave behind physical evidence. The physical evidence results in ultimately in their apprehension and arrest. Pitt worked on a number of high profile cases like the John Benet Ramsey and baseline killer investigations. He was also a consultant on the Jody Arias trial and Columbine school shooting. We interviewed the Valley profiler a number of times over the years to gain insight into the mind of a killer. It's um, highly unusual for someone to wake up one morning and say, you know what, today's the day I want to become a serial killer. It, it, it doesn't work that way. So we talk about all sorts of things. Valley attorney Dan Barr has known Pitt for more than 20 years and describes him as extremely smart and passionate about his work. Barr said Pitt was never someone who sought out the spotlight, but was always willing to speak to reporters about crimes that impacted the community. He thought it was important that the public understood the nuances and the intricacies uh, of the story. And so he was quite willing uh, and enthusiastic about spending his time doing so. But it was never out of self-promotion. Listening to Stephen talk about his cases was like listening to a podcast about a mystery case. And he would tell it in the same way.
Others I spoke to about Dr. Pitt told me how he was an avid reader but also loved old movies. He had a constant thirst to learn more about people and places he will most definitely be missed. In the newsroom, Jason Berry for Arizona's Family.